Hey guys, so I just got off the phone with Daryl, and, and don't tell him that I told you guys about this, but he's a little bit sensitive right now. He's kind of having a bit of an identity crisis. Yeah guys, he's probably never going to be played the same way ever again. So if you could just be gentle with him, he could really use your support right now. <laughs> Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kyra Stein, and it is time to brawl. Now today we're going to be talking about the balance changes that are happening with the global update. For today's video, we will be going into the complete breakdown, including all of the interaction changes with all the different brawlers because of these balance changes. That will be coming to Brawl Stars at a time in the future. I don't know, guys. I'm sorry. I wish I could tell you. First of all, I'm going to quickly list these changes and some quick interaction changes, and then I will actually be going into my own impressions after actually having played the brawlers in the developer build. Yeah, I've already messed around with them quite a bit. You guys aren't going to want to miss those sneak peeks that are coming. Now, the numbers that you're going to be seeing posted by Supercell on their Reddit post or wherever they're putting it are actually going to be at base level at level one. Most people don't keep their brawlers at level one, so all of the numbers that you're going to see in this video are actually going to be at max level. Also, I really wish that I could show you gameplay of the developer build with these balance changes in action, but I am not allowed to do that right now. And on top of that, I wanted to try to get this video out to you as quickly as I possibly could. So I just put some random gameplay over there for you guys to watch while I talk about everything. Okay, let's go ahead and start off by talking about the balance changes very quickly. Colt is getting an attack and super damage buff by 7%. At max level, each bullet is going to go from 392 damage to 420 damage. Colt will now be able to take out all brawlers with one less bullet except for Brock, Bull, Colt, Dynamite, and Pam who will require the same amount of bullets or hits. But now Colt will be able to take out Bo and Shelly with two complete shots versus the three complete shots that it used to require to take them out. Crow's also getting his super charge time buffed by 11%. It's going from nine daggers plus poison being required to charge up his super down to eight daggers plus poison. Additionally, Bull is getting a health buff from 4% at max level. He's going from 7,000 HP to 7,280 HP, which will actually separate him between Daryl and the heavy tanks like El Primo and Frank. With Bull's health buff, it's it's going to require one more bullet or hit to be completely taken out by Bo, Crow, Daryl, El Primo, Nita, Penny, Ricochet, and Shelly. With some more clarification on there, it will now require one more complete shot to land on Bull in order for him to get taken out by Bo, who is going from four to five complete shots. Crow and Penny, who are going from 6 to 7 complete shots, and Nita, who is going from 7 to 8 complete shots. Pem is also receiving a health buff going at max level from 5,880 HP to 6,160 HP. With Pam's health buff, it is going to require one more hit from each of the following brawlers to get taken out by them. Barley, Crow, Bo, Daryl, El Primo, Ricochet, Penny, Shelly, and Spike. With some more clarification, it will require one more complete shot to get taken out by El Primo, Ricochet, and Spike, who are going from three to four complete shots, and then Crow and Penny, who are going from five to six complete shots to take out Pam as a 1v1 interaction. Jessie was receiving a 10% buff to her reload speed, where it is going from two seconds to actually reload a shot down to 1.8 seconds. Penny is being nerfed. Her super cannonballs are no longer going to hit randomly. They used to be able to hit anywhere randomly within one tile of where the target was when the shot was fired. It will now always hit where the enemy was, making the shots more predictable. Her main attack damage projectile speed is also being decreased by about 6%. This attack projectile speed will be very similar to Jesse's. I have not taken out the speed gun yet to measure it out exactly, but my best guess after playing with her a little bit is that it is still slightly faster than Jesse's, but slower than Penny's shot has been. Tara is receiving an 8% nerf to her super charge time. It used to require 12 cards to hit and it will now require 13 cards to hit. Spike is receiving a nerf and then also a nerf slash buff. Whereas attack pattern is no longer going to be random, it will now be predictable. It will explode the same direction every single time, no matter which angle you shoot it from. Every single time that you shoot out a spike shot when it bursts, two spikes will explode directly horizontally with the explosion, and then the other spikes are measured 60 degrees above or below the horizontal axis, like the image that you can see over there. Additionally, spike's main attack range is going to be remaining at seven and 
two thirds tiles. But the burst radius after it explodes is decreasing by 13%. It is decreasing from five tiles down to four and one thirds tiles. Additionally, Daryl is kind of having an identity crisis and he is totally being reworked. I would not view Daryl as the same brawler as he was because he's totally different now. I would just think of him as a new brawler. His super range is being nerfed from 23 and a third tiles down to seven tiles, which is a 70% nerf to the range of his super. Additionally, the damage dealt by his super when you actually roll over a brawler is being decreased by 37% at max level from eight 196 damage down to 560 damage. Now to offset that, it's actually going to start charging 46% faster, where it's going from 13 shots being required to hit down to 7 attack hits to actually charge it up. With each attack dealing 2 shots that both shoot out 4 possible hits, this actually means it is possible for Daryl to completely charge up his super in one single shot if 7 of the 8 possible hits actually land on the enemy brawler. And on top of that, it will now start to automatically charge 5% every second passively. This means that without even landing a single hit, his super will charge up in 20 seconds. With that being said, his star power is being changed a little bit. His super is now going to activate a shield that will reduce damage by 30% for 3.5 seconds. This lasts well beyond the time for him to actually roll, which means that Daryl will now be able to charge in, deal a bunch of damage with his super up, decrease the damage that he receives, and then charge out because he's already charged up his super again. Okay guys, now let's actually jump into these balance changes and talk about how I feel about them, what I what I think, and then also a little bit about why I think Supercell made these changes. So we'll start off with uh, the more boring ones, and then we'll move to the more exciting ones. So Colt, um, Colt has felt incredibly underwhelming in for a very long time. There's basically always been a reason to either choose Brock or Ricochet over Colt. Ricochet offers more area control, and then Brock offers more more damage consistently at a longer range. I've always wanted there to be a reason to like actually play Colt over those two, and I'm hoping that this will make him more of a consistent damage dealer. I'm not quite sure that this is the buff that I was hoping for Colt, but I do think that it will change things, and I hope that he will become more useful. Okay, so Crow is gonna be very interesting. I do not actually know how big of a buff this is actually going to be, okay? But based off of the numbers, um, I said 11% earlier, because if we are actually going from nine daggers plus poison down to eight daggers plus poison for him to charge up his super, that's 11%. But it's interesting because the last balance changes that I could possibly find on Crow's recharge rate was it going from six daggers plus poison to eight daggers plus poison back in May. Now it's going from nine daggers plus poison down to eight daggers plus poison? Where did that additional dagger come from? That wasn't in the patch notes. I mean, I, I guess it's possible that I, I missed something. So I did a little bit of research and I looked into my own personal notes when, as far as like the Brawlympics are concerned. And yes, Crow's recent balance was made so that with eight daggers plus poison, he would charge up his super 99.2%, which is just barely shy of 100%. So. I don't know if this is going to be like a 0.2% buff, or if this will actually be like a substantial buff. Like, I, I have no idea. But I am very excited to see Crow receiving some love as far as his super recharge rate. It's just been too too low, and that has made Crow a lot more boring and less... Uh, just just not as fun to play, so I'm excited to see how he's changed. I think it'll become a little bit more viable in Heist. I think it'll be more viable in Showdown. We may start seeing him in some Bounty, and yeah, I think that's about where we'll see him at. Now let's talk about Bull. Now my biggest complaint with Bull is that he's just been too similar to Daryl, or that Daryl has been too similar to Bull. With Daryl's changes and Bull now going to be having more HP than Daryl, I think that I'm happy with Bull. Um, in the past, he's felt very underwhelming in comparison to Bull, who had a longer super, dealt more damage consistently, and also who outranged Bull. I mean, don't get me wrong, Bull definitely has had his perks, like the fact that he can take out an enemy safe in 10.2 seconds with his star power. Bull right now typically is not like a very highly competitive brawler, except for in Heist, so I think that we'll see him a little bit more in Heist, and then I also think that we'll start seeing him maybe pop up in some other maps that have quite a few bushes. Bam! Um, received a 5% health buff. Honestly, Honestly, I don't know if that was like really warranted. I felt like Pam felt fine. Um, and I don't think the 5% will make that much of a difference. She's kind of been outshined by other gem carriers, specifically Penny. But I think that just mostly has to deal with Penny just being super overpowered and incredibly strong. 
My guess is that she had some somewhat lower win rates and some use rates, and so Super Soul wanted to give her a slight boost, or maybe they just kind of wanted to shake up the meta a little bit. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I think the Pam will remain a solid option in a gem grab, and then she'll become maybe a little bit more off meta in some situations like maybe Brawl Ball. But I don't expect to see her popping up a lot more now because of her 5% health buff. Next, let's talk about Jesse, who in comparison to Penny has felt incredibly underwhelming. Now, I did not suggest a Jesse buff because I assumed that a Penny nerf would be enough to balance these two out. I felt like Penny was super incredibly strong, and that meant that there was no reason to really ever pick Jesse, which honestly is true in most cases. My guess is that Supercell saw like some something very strange or off with her win rates and use rates, which is why they actually decided to go ahead and change her. Um, another interesting thing is that this does actually change another mechanic between Jesse and Penny, where Penny and Jesse have had the same reload speed ever since Penny was originally released, and now Jesse's going to be able to consistently fire off more shots more frequently, which may even mean that she'll be able to charge up her super more frequently, uh, more do more consistent damage, uh, and maybe even set her apart from Penny in, in a certain way. I think one of the biggest key differences here for Jessie is her difference in interactions with Penny, where they both require four shots to take each other out, which means that if both of them fire off at each other at the very same time and they keep on spamming that shot, the Penny will actually get taken out before Jessie will be, because Jessie will be able to charge up her attack slightly faster and take out that Penny. There will be other key interactions with Jessie, but I think that that is the major difference here. In some ways, Penny counters Jessie, and then in other ways, Jessie will now be able to counter Penny. Okay, now let's talk about Penny, who has been so incredibly overpowered for a very, very long time, and the biggest issue has been her turret. Specifically, where her turret could still hit you while you were running in a straight line if you just happen to have bad luck. Uh, it made for some very difficult situations. I've talked about randomness in competitive games like, uh, like Brawl Stars in a previous video, and the randomness that her turret offered was not the best use of randomness, and I'm really excited that Supercell, I don't know if they listened to my feedback or if they came up with it on their own. Either way, I'm really excited that they are trying to deal away with some of that randomness in situations where it's not actually a positive factor in the gameplay. So, so now Penny's turret is going to fire in a much more predictable manner, which means that all you have to do to avoid it is just a move away from the spot that you were when the turret originally fired. That is not very hard to do. But now, if you do get hit by a Penny turret, you know what you could have done in order to have avoided that shot. I also like that Penny's attack uh, speed has actually been uh, slowed down a little bit. In comparison to Jesse, it was way easier to hit a target with Penny than it was with Jesse, and I don't think this is a very dramatic change. But with both the changes to Penny and Jesse, I think there will be uh, more of like a, a, it'll be a harder decision to, to decide between choosing between a Penny or a Jesse when you're trying to think of those competitive comps and stuff. Penny, when she's underpowered, feels incredibly underpowered. So I think this is a very good direction to go to. Not too strong of a nerf, so that she'll like she'll be like completely useless. But I'll, I still think this should be very viable, and I'm excited to see exactly what happens with the meta. Now let's talk about Terra, who I wouldn't necessarily say that Terra felt overpowered. It's actually really interesting because if you just take if you take away Terra's super and you look at her base stats she's arguably the most underwhelming brawler in the game she has a slow reload speed she doesn't shoot very far her burst damage potential even up close isn't very good in comparison to other brawlers and from a distance her damage is like eh. but with her super she has an incredible potential in helping swing a lost match in your favor with either gem grab or brawl ball with this nerf to her recharge uh i it's not a huge difference but it will make an impact on things and i think it'll make it a little bit more important for you to not waste her super my guess is that supercell saw higher uh use rates and win rates than than i personally would have thought that made them actually feel like she needed some type of a nerf spike yes okay i am so in love with these changes to spike okay not only has it been so incredibly long that spike has been so incredibly OP, but I've also not been a fan of randomness in the direction of his shots after they burst. Okay, so the directions that Spike's attack actually bursts is going to do a few different things. So first of all, it will decrease Spike's effective range because a Spike will never continue along the same path that it was originally aimed. It will allow Spike users to actually fire off an attack in a way that they can actually plan to hit an enemy brawler behind a wall or around a corner or something like that. And it will also allow any players to predict where those spikes are going to be going and effectively dodge those shots. 
which increases the amount of skill in the game. On top of that, by decreasing the range that the spikes burst out after reaching spike's throw range, spike will not only become more predictable, but also less effective. And let's be honest, guys, spike has probably been the most effective brawler at, well, Almost everything. I am very excited to see how Spike's changes are actually going to positively impact the meta. Huge props to Supercell for making these changes with Spike. Okay guys, Daryl. Wow. So I really wish that I could show you guys gameplay of Daryl right now because he feels so different. So let's talk about his super range. Uh, seven tiles. That's as long as Shelly's attack and Poco's regular attack, and that, that is not very long. So here's the thing, guys. In my recent video where I talked about the balance changes that I would like to see in the game, I talked about the most fun version Crow that I could possibly imagine. Essentially, a brawler who could jump in, deal a bunch of damage, and then jump out very quickly. That's Daryl. Now, I don't know if he's actually balanced yet, and it might be the fact that his roll distance has been decreased by 70%, uh, but his super does feel a little underwhelming at the moment. The trade-off, though, is that he gets to use his super all the time, which makes for some very fun and very interesting interactions. He can literally charge up his super in one shot if he's super close to an enemy brawler and it's almost a complete hit. Even then, when he's close up to enemy brawlers, he's almost guaranteed to charge up his super back up with three shots, and even then, if he doesn't, he will be super close to doing so because of the passive charge of his super. The fact that he can charge up his super in 20 seconds without dealing any damage at all is nuts. If there's going to be an enemy Daryl, you have to be prepared for some close up and personal encounters with that Daryl charging up on you. What's also interesting is Daryl's shield. Now, it doesn't mitigate the same amount of damage as it used to, but it now lasts beyond the roll time, which means that you can roll up to somebody, blast their face off, receive decreased damage, and then charge up your super again and roll on out of there before you get taken out. Now, why do I think Supercell made these changes? Well, there are two things. So first of all, I think that they wanted to make Daryl feel very different than Bull, and this absolutely does make Daryl feel very different than Bull. But more importantly, Daryl was super weak in most maps and most game modes, except Heist, where he was a monster beast that they could not possibly buff, or he'd just become even more incredibly overpowered in Heist. Now in Heist, his super role will still be very important and beneficial. He can still use to cross rivers, bypass brawlers, or even just charge up to an enemy brawler, take them out really fast, and then use that to actually create a safe pathway for him to get to the enemy safe. But Daryl will no longer be that brawler that you have to have on your team every single time that heist is up regardless of the map. And I honestly don't know what to think about Daryl yet. I've play tested him a lot against bots. There aren't a lot of people that have access to the developer build and those that do have access to the developer build are usually trying to create as much content with it as they possibly can in as short period as they possibly can. So I've mostly played against bots and the thing is with bots is they just always clump up to one little section and as soon as they see you, they quickly auto aim all of their attacks on you like a crazy person and a Daryl coming up, he, like he, he just gets obliterated against three bots doing that against you. So I actually don't know exactly what I think about Daryl, but I'm really excited and I think that there is reason to believe that he could be incredibly overpowered. But at the same time, I also think that there is reason to believe that he'll become completely underpowered. I don't know, I'm really excited to see him and see what people think of him. I think that he'll actually become a solid option in gem grab. I think he'll become a solid option in brawl ball. And I also think that he'll become a solid option in heist or remain a decent option in heist. Maybe even some bounty. I don't know, I'm really excited to see. Anyways guys, I cannot wait to show you guys everything that is coming in the update but for now i'm curious to know what you guys think about these balance changes so make sure you drop a comment below is there a brawler that you think should have gotten a buff or should have gotten a nerf or is there a brawler that got a buff or a nerf that you didn't think that they should or they should have done differently i really am curious what you guys think anyways i wanted to give a huge thank you to my youtube and patreon sponsors for helping support the channel in a very big way if you want to become one with special perks then definitely check out the link in the description below for now this is kairos time ticking by and we will see you in brawl stars